All right, this video is going to be for the tool post, uh, the tool post part, and we'll go through a little bit of the drawing. Um, if you're back again on the home page here, so we're looking at the engineering design course, period 4A. Week 4 materials uh, just produced the uh, mounting plate, which will be uploaded shortly. So now I'm going to go ahead and open up my tool post and take a look at this. Now this one it looks like all we're going to do is find the center mass at one corner. And the center mass we're looking at is going to be on this corner here. Now the key with this one that I showed in class is that this will actually be put on the corner before we add a fillet on that corner. Okay, so it's going to be a step before we add our final fillets on here. Okay, and that's going to be really important to understand. Now looking at the drawing here, going back to the beginning. Oops, that's my email. That's what I need to see. Going back here. We'll see that we have the mounting, nope, not the mounting plate, but the tool post PDF file. Take a look at this. I see it's in inches, it's in pounds. This will be a uh, inch part. Um, I'm going to basically build this in layers. Okay, so in this case, what I'm going to do is build this where I'm going to start with this piece here. Um, this like what this overhang basically, and then on that face, I'll build out this ramp. Then on that face of the ramp, I'll build out this little bump out here, and then off of there, I'll bump this out and finish by adding this rectangle and two cuts. We'll add in our hole wizards, and then we'll finish off with our fillet tool. So I'm going to take this one and pull it over to my other screen real quick, go into uh, my uh, SOLIDWORKS here. Let's see, I already had this one from the last time. I'm going to close that off. Okay, go to here and close this one off. Okay, so I'm going to start with a file new, inches, okay, and I'm going to actually start this one on my right plane with a new sketch. Okay, now what I'm going to do, and I, again, I don't care where this origin is, so I'm going to add on my coordinate system at the end. I'm just going to go ahead and start drawing this up. I'm going to draw over, down, slightly in, up, back, down, over. Okay, now I'm going to try my Smart Dimension tool, and I'm going to kind of look carefully at all of these dimensions. This one here is actually going to be 3.62. The 3.76 is for the rectangle we'll add on later. Um, the thickness of this top piece right here, this sticks out 2 inches. This cut inside here, if you look at the right side view, I'm going to use the 0 .750 of the two numbers. Uh, this lip right here is over, uh, stick, oops, nope, that's what I want. I want this line. Clicking that line, I'm going to smart dimension it 2.20. Uh, the height of that will be one inch on this front end. I'm getting that from the section cut view. And then this part inside here is actually going to end up being uh, 1.24 plus 1.62 for a total of 2.86. Okay, so there are all your dimensions. I'm going to pull this out so you can see them. Now from here what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an extrusion on this, a total thickness of 3.12. So I'm going to go to Features, Extrude. I'll go ahead, you can do a mid-plane if you want on this one, it doesn't really matter. I'll go ahead and do it as a mid-plane. Um, and I'll put in 3.12, oops, I did two decimal points, 0 0.12 and hit enter. And hit my check mark. Now obviously I don't want balsa here, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to a cast alloy steel. So I'm going to go to my steel, I'm going down to cast alloy steel apply. And close. Now again, I'm going to go in here and do a Control S to save. I'm going to save this as Tool Post underscore my last name and hit save. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is highlight this front face, start a new sketch, space bar normal to, turn on my line tool, and I'm going to create a what? Uh oh, that's where I want to start. I want to start at the corner. I'm going to pull up, down, back to the corner, and back again. 
And what I'll actually do is I'm going to add in a center line here that goes from this corner here straight across to the other side. Now between here what I'm going to do is create a 15 degree angle. Okay, 15 degrees. And then the height of this side right here will be 1.24. Okay, so if you're looking from your isometric, there is the slope surface. Now, your slope surface is going to be extruded out 0.75 or features extruded boss base. I'm going to extrude it up to the inside face of this surface. Okay, so I'll do an up to surface and pick here. That way, if any of this changes, let's say I go to 0.752 here, this will change to 0.752 with it. Okay, so we're going to lock this extrusion to that face. I'm going to hit my check mark. All right, so now I'm going to build off of this face. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start a new sketch. I'm going to do a space bar normal to. And the first thing I'm going to do is highlight this line and do it in offset entities 0.2 inches. And check. I'm then going to take and draw a line basically from this corner over. I'm going to go right up to this intersection. I shall draw it long. I'll draw another line from this corner up, make that long. And I'm going to pull this one long also. I'm going to take my trim into these tool and trim off these pieces. Now you may have to add a relationship of collinear between these lines. In between this line here and this line here, make them collinear. So now from an isometric, I'm going to extrude this out up to this surface. Okay, so they're going to be the same thickness. I could also make it 0.2, but I'm going to make it locked to that surface by doing features, extrude, up to surface, and highlight that face. Hit my check mark. Okay, now highlight this face, start a new sketch, space bar, normal tip. I'm going to start with my line tool. I'm going to draw up, over till I intersect that line on a horizontal, down this line to the corner, down to the bottom, and close. Okay, this height of the back wall is in the right side view, and that height will be 0.88. And that's it. That's all you need to make this fully defined. Okay, now I'm going to extrude this out. I'm going to go Features, Extrude. Now this one I'm going to think about mathematically. Um, I'm going to do basically uh, 3.4 minus 2. So that'd be 1.4 inches wide. Now I'm going to do a quick control save so I don't lose that because now most of my tool post is done. So in four steps, I built all the levels I need. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this front face right here. I'm going to do a sketch, a space bar, and a normal two. What I'm going to do is take my corner rectangle. And I am going to put a rectangle at the bottom. Now the advantage of doing the midplane extrusion is all I'm going to do now is add a relationship between that midpoint right there of this rectangle, control key, that origin, and I'm going to do a coincident relationship. And hit my check mark. I'm going to measure this at 0.748. I'm going to use the upper number here of the two numbers that are showing. And then the height of this will be from the very bottom to this very top is going to be 3.76. Okay. I am now going to go through features. I'm going to extrude this. Oops, features. Extrude. And I'm going to do reverse direction. And I'm going to do an up to next. Uh, maybe that won't work. I'll do an up to, let's do surface and go to this back. So this is going to be a lot of up to surface stuff. Okay, so that gets it up to that back surface, and I hit my check mark. I'm going to hit this front face again. 
I'm going to start a new sketch, spacebar, normal to. I'm going to create two small, oops, let me do that again, two small rectangles attached to the corners. I'm going to dimension the circles, or <laughs> circles, rectangles, to point one, two in length and point zero six in height. Okay, now I'm going to do a control and highlight these two to make them equal. And this left hand side, that's not the point, the two sides and make those equal. Okay, so there is what I'm looking at. And again, this is from the detail view. From here, I'm just going to do a features, extrude a cut, through all. I hit my check mark. Okay, so there are the bottom cuts. All right, so I'm going to do a control save. Now, I'm still not going to fill it yet. I'm going to go ahead right now and use my whole wizard. Okay, so I'm going to start with my features tool, whole wizard. And the first holes I'm going to put in are going to be the counterbore holes that are at the top surfaces of both. The counterbore, again, is a flat bottom hole. So that's a counterbore. This is a counterbore. And these are what we call tapped holes. Okay, so that's what I'm going to create now. Moving that back over and get my solvers back up. I'm going to start with a counterbore. I'll restart, reset my uh, defaults here. It's going to be ANSI inch, and then I'm going to basically use the three numbers I see pointing to the top hole. So I'm going to go in here where it says show custom sizing, and I'm going to type in these numbers exactly the way I see them. 0.625 in the first box. Come down here and do a, uh, let's see, the second number is 0.938. The third number is 0.62. And the last thing I need to do is make sure the end condition says through all. Okay. Now, once I have that done, I'm going to go to positions. I'm going to select this face. I'm going to select right about there. And I'm going to come down to this face and select right there. Okay. I'm going to hit escape one time. Space bar, normal two. And actually, this will not work. Never mind. You can't do that. I don't think, yeah, I won't let you do it. So I got to delete that one. I thought you could do it on two faces. You can't. That's why you want to make sure you look at these things from your, not your isometric view, but from your normal two view. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead. I'll have to put two whole wizards in on that part itself. All right. Now this one here, I'm going to lock vertically to my origin here. If not, you're going to have to measure halfway in. I'm going to go vertical here. And then I'm going to measure in 0.56 from the back edge. Okay, I will then go ahead and hit my check mark, give me that shape right there. Okay, I'm going to turn that tool on again, features, whole wizard, use exactly the same information. I'm changing nothing here, but when I go to positions, instead of clicking up on the top surface, I'm going to repeat this on this bottom surface here. I'll escape once, spacebar, normal two. Okay, same thing. I'm going to have this be vertically aligned to my origin. And I'm going to go ahead and make that distance down from the back. It's going to be 2.76 from the back line to this point here will be 2.76. I will then hit my check mark. Isometric view. There are my two holes. Control S to save. Now, I'm going to go back one more time to Features and Hole Wizard, but this time I'm going to do what are called tapped holes. So I'm going to do a straight tap and reset my sizing. I want an ANSI inch. I want a straight pipe tapped hole, or tapped hole, straight pipe tapped hole. Okay. I want, in this case, it's going to be a 5 8 11. I don't want this straight pipe. I want to go tapped hole. And I'm looking for a 5 8 11. Um, and that's it. 
Okay, 5 eighths dash 11, the end of it should be uh, up to next. If I do it through all, you got to think that through. If I do it through all, it's going to punch all the way through my part. The big thing is also look at the bottom boxes here. Make none, sure none of these are clicked on. The near side or the far side countersinks. This should be just with thread callout. Okay, now I'm going to go to positions. I'm going to click on this top surface and drop two holes. Hit escape and do a space bar, normal two. Okay. Now, these holes are going to be from the back, are going to be from here to here, are going to be 0.56 plus 0.88. Uh, these are going to be 2.12 across from each other. And this one here from this edge is going to be 0.5. Okay. I need to add a relationship between this left hole and the right hole of horizontal. And now they should both be fully defined. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit my check mark. Okay, don't worry about seeing those threads in the holes. That's a cosmetic thing. These are correct because I can see the dashed lines. Now I'm going to do a quick control save because the last thing i got to do is i got to add two sets of fillets. Okay, one of the fillets is going to be 0.24. That is in the right side view. So feature and fillet. 0.24, enter, and that fill will go right there in that corner. I have my check mark. Now, before I put all the other fillets on, I'm going to go ahead now and add in my origin right here. So looking back at my original piece right here, okay, the origin is going to have the X. So I'm looking at this right here in the corner. The origin is going to have the X going to my right, the Y is going up, the Z is coming out. Okay, so coming back into my SOLIDWORKS here, I will take my features, reference geometry, coordinate system, and click on this corner right here. So X is going to my right, Y is going up, Z is coming out. I hit my check mark, and then I'm going to go to the I here and turn that on so I can see the coordinate system. So there is your current coordinate system. Okay, now I'm going to do a quick control save so I don't lose that. And now all I'm going to do is add on my last fillet, which is in the note at the bottom of the drawing. All rounds and fillets are 0 0.06 unless otherwise noted. <clears throat> so turning on my fillet tool, I will put 0 0.06 in there, and I will begin clicking on all of these edges. Okay, that includes this one, even this little one right here, uh, this one here, yes, that one there, up here, okay, uh, that takes care of that, I'm pretty sure it's rounded, it is, I'm going over here, I see that this corner here is rounded, that corner there is rounded, the back edge here is rounded, this one's rounded, um, and then this front edge here is rounded. And so are these two pieces here. So I'm just hopefully you can see all that. Okay, but everything on the inside here is flat. Okay, so that should take care of all of your fillets. Hit my check mark, and I'm going to go ahead and add some color to these so you can see them a little bit better. So I'll hit my beach ball, fill it to, to bright red. So that's what you're looking at. Okay. I'm going to do a quick file save. And then again, what you're going to do is get your mass properties. Now remember, you have to change it from default to coordinate system 1. Otherwise, your X, Y, and Z will be off. Okay. You got to make sure you drop that down. Now, to put this on the paper, again, in this case, I'm going to do a file new, GHSA-inch, and OK. All right, now I'm going to start with the front view. The scale will be hidden lines on. will be at 1 to 2. I'll put the front to my left, right to the right, top way up here, isometric in the corner. Drop that in and add color. Get rid of my extra black lines. Delete. OK. 
Okay. Now, in this case, I'm going to get rid of that tapped hole because I don't need that. We'll add it somewhere else. Now, to get your other view, which is a section view, I'm going to do a vertical section cut under View Layout, Section View, Vertical Cutting Line, and I'm going to cut it right here at the center of this right hole here. I'm going to hit my check mark, and I'm going to pull this to my left. Okay, so Section AA and get rid of the tapped hole. All right, now from here, I'm going to do what's called a detail view, and the detail is going to be of this cut right here. So I'm going to go to my view layout, detail view, and I'm just going to kind of click somewhere on this line and pull a slightly large circle like so. All right, and then I'm going to pull this up into the top. Okay, so detail B is at one, two, one. Uh, hidden lines are on, that's fine. Okay, and then I'm going to come down here and rotate this around, and that's my detail B. All right, from here, you're going to need to put in all the dimensioning. So I'm going to move this detail B above, like they have here. Okay, now while I'm at this, I'm going to go ahead and move some of these figures up. I'm going to go to this note or this tool over here i'm going to come over to the drawing i'm going to highlight this entire note control copy go back into my drawing here turn on my note tool under annotation and do a control v okay i'm going to make this font i believe was a size 14 and a left justified oops i gotta highlight that all left justified font size 14 and escape. Okay, I'm just going to make sure that this note all lines up to the left. And then you're going to fill in this information. So before you turn this in, you will enter actual numbers in here. Okay, you're going to go ahead and do the dimensioning on this, get it all finished up, change your title block, save, and print this. Okay, at this point, this part is done. Make sure you get it, um, the part and the drawing submitted into Schoology. I'll get it graded as soon as you turn it in. With that said, that's all I got. Good luck. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to reach out and ask. Thank you.